uh, Rancher de la Luna with Jonathan, bass player for ooh, Earthlings, sure. Dot Hacker, mm-hmm. Mojave Lords, yeah, Sweethead, Sweethead, tons of bands. You're a busy guy. <laughs> busy guy, yeah. trying. So we've been dialing in a tone print for the Spectrocom bass compressor. Yes. And um, compared to some of the other stuff we've done with bass players who want a more polite sound, mm. is maybe the politically correct way of saying that you <laughs> opted for something else instead. Yeah. Can you explain a little bit about what you were looking for? Well, um, my my uh, typical use for compressors hasn't been the, the using it for the polite, you know, polite circumstances. It's no. been more of using it as an effect yep. and trying to uh, create something new with it and uh, just using it for the things that only a com- compressor can do. Yep. You know, the sustain is typically what I get kind of entranced by with yep. those pedals. And um, I'm always interested to see how far the sustain can get pushed. <laughs> it can get pushed pretty far. It can get pushed pretty far. And um, I was thinking in particular about a few years ago, I was in a band called Broken Bells and I was touring with them. Oh, I love Broken Bells. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was a fun It was a fun tour, fun year spent on the road. But they, um, a lot of the, uh, the, what I was doing in that band were covering not only bass parts, but keyboard things yeah. and things like this. And there was one song in particular that was kind of a slower song, and it the bass uh, role was played by a keyboard on the record. And uh, it was just these really long sustained, you know, yeah. like, you know, what a root note per per bar for the whole song. Yeah, and just like just, hats. And yeah, it just was like a yeah, it was like a just big pedal tone yeah. kind of kind of vibe. And to do that, I and live what I was doing was I had this really severe sustainer pedal yeah. feeding a subharmonic synthesizer ah, pedal. Ah, okay, yeah. And that combination really did the trick. Yeah. And it was easy to just, you know, I didn't have to trigger anything. I could just turn it on, hit the note. Yeah. It would blast the whole bar just yeah. consistently. And then I could move and it would, it was underneath everything and massive. Yeah. It, it was cool. a fun, yeah. a fun thing just yeah, rattling the stage to death, <laughs> and everybody in the audience is kind of looking for the keyboard player. Yeah, right? exactly, exactly. So, so that that was one of my favorite uses of a of a of a sustain a, a compressor pedal, sustain yeah. pedal, and um, so that's what I was thinking about when we were messing around just yeah. now. Was that what that pedal did for me then? So, so maybe we should just hear it, see what it does. Okay. Let's do some simple. So that's without. And let's kick it in. <laughs> if we wait on this note, we're going to be here all day. Yeah. That's what's impressing me about this pedal and what we've come up with so far is just that this can this is possible. Yeah. I can't even believe this. I've never seen one that does this. There shouldn't be there's not a lot of vibration left in that string. No, there can't be. Little These little are dead strings too. That's the other crazy part. I mean It has something to work with, apparently. It <laughs> must. It's still responsive to the volume control, which is cool. And then, you know, we can just go from there and just... I think it's really cool. I love it. Yeah, it's it's. I think it'll be really useful. 
Well, I was thinking of maybe calling it the trap door. Just to explain a little bit about what's, what we've done kind of in the background. I mean, one of the things you talked about was the fact that you wanted to have it deep, you know. Yeah. So you Yeah, know. not to have the compressor um, uh, alter the low end and if, you know, maybe even add low end. Because yeah. a lot of them, you know, tend to kind of clip. Yeah, clip a clip little the bit of the low off, end, yeah. Which makes sense, but for, yeah, for typical uses. Yeah, but I mean, for this one, we actually boosted the low end a little bit. Right. So you get that really, you know, fat sound. Um, and the other thing we did was that, I mean, this is basically a fixed setting pedal. Right. You can change the, the threshold, which is typically what you would use to adjust the amount of compression. So you opted for just having a volume control. Yeah, so you can basically yeah. turn up and down. Yeah, know. I figured it might be kind of cool to add to it as an effect or as a, uh, you know, when you hit the thing, having something happen that's noticeable rather than it being a subtle tone enhancer or something to actually have it. So you could have it be a boost, yeah. uh, boost it a little bit, have it be a lead, have it feed other things, have it drive your amp a little bit yeah. in a way that maybe it's not used yeah. to or... You know, might be more. I just thought it might be more interesting yeah, to have the sound stay the same and have uh, yeah. So control if you use a tone volume. print, you you will get that sound. The only thing the knob does is basically just it's a volume control from right from for live for live so, yeah. live uses. I guess yeah. is what I was thinking of too. So. so and it's little, so you know. Yeah, it'll fit on pedal boards. Yeah, I love that. I love that design. The one knob, man. If I could have a whole pedal board of just things with yes, one knobs. I like that too. Just Sim set up and just not think about it yeah. ever again. Yeah. Be great. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to do that. So that's the trap door. Thanks so much for doing this. Oh, thank you. Cool. Yeah. Thanks a lot.